Hi, my name's Irrelevant, and one of the biggest problems people with high-end computers might face is powering them. Now, it's one thing to go out and buy a very strong power supply, but it's another thing to actually have a circuit to plug that into. Today, I'm sorting out the last piece of that puzzle. Now, if you have a uh, power supply getting into the north of a thousand watt range, technically you can't just plug that into a normal circuit. Code even calls for dedicated circuits for fixed appliances that use that much power, though computers are generally exempt. And realistically, even if you have a power supply of that rating, it's not pulling that much power. Now, as the story goes, I used to have a 1200 watt Seasonic Platinum in my system. And after my most recent upgrade, after dialing it in and overclocking it the way I wanted and then running it full send, the computer would just turn off, not even shut down or blue screen or error or anything, just, just like someone pulled out the plug. I thought the power supply might be defective or worn out, but after a conversation with Seasonic, it was determined that I had outgrown it it could no longer handle the amount of hardware that I was running. Now, realistically, my system might be consuming between a six, seven, 800 watts RMS under full load, but there could be instantaneous peaks that go beyond 1200 watts. It's one of the reasons why you rate your power supply 50% of what you actually need because hardware, just like audio speakers, can peak beyond their wattage rating. So nevertheless, it was time to upgrade. I scored a really good deal on a EVGA 1600 Gold. Now, once you know you're plugging something in that is rated for that much power consumption, electrical code dictates an 80% D-rate. Whatever you know you're going to be plugging into that circuit, it has to be no more than 80% of the circuit capacity. Typical 15 amp circuit is 1800 watts. This power supply is rated for 16. Your 80% is about 1400 watts, so going beyond 1400 watts they want you to have a 20 amp circuit on 12 gauge wire before i moved into this house it was uh, undergoing renovations and i had the opportunity to pop in and uh, make some adjustments or some recommendations this house used to be electric baseboard heating and then it got upgraded to a gassed forced air furnace this means that my house now had a network of unused 20 gauge wires going all throughout it and there was a baseboard heater on that very wall so i says to the electrician i says yo i want a 240 volt plug there <laughs> yeah not only did i get a dedicated circuit for my computer but i went full send it's 240 volts it's a little known fact that most consumer electronics they don't just run on your stock 120 volts Look at any phone charger, the specifications. Modern PWM switching power supplies can run on a variety of voltages, anywhere from 90 to 240 volts. So without any adjustments, I could just schlup that in there. The catch is it doesn't exactly use a normal plug. Can you tell the difference? Yeah, that's right. It's got horizontal prongs. That's what a 15 amp 240 volt receptacle looks like. So obviously I needed special cables to plug into it. As you can see, it maintains the typical duplex format. So one for my computer, one for my computer screen. It's a win-win situation. And of course, as dictated by code, if you add a circuit to a living area, it must be AFCI protected. Fortunately, they do make 240 volt 15 amp AFCI breakers. Yeah, I know this is a bit overkill, but sometimes that's just the way I like it. To be honest, I never thought I was gonna outgrow a 1200 watt power supply, but apparently if you overclock a 3800X on an X570 board with dual Vega 64s, also overclocked under full water, that can actually peak out a 1200 watt power supply, especially when you got a whole bunch of other junk going on around here. This isn't the sexiest computer build, but I have a lot going on here to fill my needs, so I kind of had to work with it. Trust me, I can do much cleaner builds than this on a normal setup. Now, realistically, most people, they don't have to worry about this sort of thing, but I had an opportunity and I used it. Truth be told, this isn't the first time I've rigged up a dedicated circuit for my main computer. I just had previous opportunities in the know-how. 
Now you see that EVGA power supply, because it complies to electrical code, it doesn't use the standard connector. That's your standard power supply connector. Here's the one the EVGA uses. The difference is this one is rated for the 20 amp service. Again, because of derating, even though it's under 1800 watts, because it's within 80% of 1800 watts, they have to step it up. So they had to use this custom beefy connector. Now before, for my last power supply, I made this cable and it worked perfectly fine. I had a lot of these IEC cables to uh, be able to chop up. Now the EVGA comes with the special custom cable with your normal prongs on the end, but because it's the only one like it I have, I didn't want to chop it just in case I ever wanted to put it back to uh, 120 volts again or maintain its resale value. Debatably, if you're a responsible technician, you don't really sell a chopped up cable to someone that you don't know. As soon as I cut this thing, it's not qualified anymore. However, I can make my own. For the last little while, just to solve the problem, I had this uh, sketchy adapter here and well, that just filled the need at the time, but th th that's a no-no. I had to get rid of that. I had to special order a new end from eBay China and it finally came in after about two months. Now the hardware stores, they sell the 240 volt ends, so that wasn't a problem. Here's a nice Leviton one that's all rubberized and nice. And then of course you can also get uh, fresh cable itself. So that's basically long and short of the mod that I'm doing today. Even though I already have the circuit installed, so that's kind of anticlimactic, I still have to go and make the special cable, finally buttoning up that loose end. Ain't that just something. All that build up and all I'm doing is making a <laughs> making a power cable. So here we have a choke device. Choke device chokes this way, slips onto there. Always remember to put in these crystals first. Then we have to do some stripping down of this thing and stripping down this cable is always fun. This is SJOW, 90C rated, 300 volts. Does this have a strip gauge in it? Sometimes they have a strip gauge to uh, kind of set you in the right direction. Oh, gotta make sure that goes on there too. No, I don't know that it does. Okay, well, we can kind of guesstimate here. So first off, we gotta, gotta kind of strip her down there. Strip her down. Strip her down. Got this paper stuff to cut out. Paper and an electrical wire? <gasps> well, it's probably flame retardant. Feels like wax paper. There to kind of support it pull wise. Now that that's done, the rest of this is going to go a lot more smoothly. So. We're choking right about there, yeah, about halfway. Now, ideally we don't have to tin these ends with this kind of uh, connector because it just has nice, just has nice uh, little, little cable clamps. Oh, look at that, ain't that dandy. Now, what's hot and neutral in this thing? There are no color codes. Oh, it says right there, neutral line. Just uh, slip that in there, bud. And clamp her down. Yeah, of all the ones I could have chose on eBay, this is a pretty good one. It's easy to work with. The ones where you have to wrap around a binding post, those are a pain in the butt. And it's just that easy. Yeah, we gotta get this little shock assembly back up into place here. Wrap that over. Seems like uh, the geometry is a bit compromised now. Okay, okay, that seems good. Put the screws back in there. Whoa, these guys are jumpers. And because of these oddball screws, snug them up. Oh, careful with this plastic. It feels like it wants to strip out. That's no good. Now we just get this choke assembly in place, if we can. Yeah, there it goes. Ha, that's pretty good. The only thing to keep in mind is uh, that these screws want to strip out and this thing isn't gonna close up that clamshell, so. Be careful with your screw tension. Now I just gotta put on the other normal end here. Now the funny thing is in 240 volt applications, there is no line neutral. There's line in line. That's how our split face system works, sir. Well, dropping stuff might be one of the qualifications you have to have if you wanna be a tech YouTuber, so. Not that I'm technically a tech YouTuber, I'm a 
do everything to her. I can't emphasize how handy hook knives are. They are so much nicer to use than plain utility knives, except when the wire doesn't cooperate. So this guy, pretty much the same deal. I didn't even really measure anything here. I just kind of started chopping. You can tell I have a lot of experience doing this. Again, you notice there's no color code on this. There's no differentiation between line and neutral because they're both line. We're gonna need our green handle to work on this domestic product. Yeah, slip that into there, get that ground into place. It's a force of habit they teach you. Connect grounds first. And then these two pretty much go in any old which way you want. Well, you know what, I think these guys might be a touch too long. Quick trim there. They're bottoming out on me. Third time's the charm. You really wanna look like you know what you're doing, and then a component doesn't quite cooperate the way you're expecting it to. And then we just zip this on here. Hey, where'd it go? There's a little bump there. It does have an index. Ah, that bump there. And screw down the choke. At least that's what I call these things. I don't know what they're officially called. Not too tight now. That's pretty good for the size of wire. And there you have it. Now I have a, a custom cable ready to go. I guess we should go install it and test it now. Even though I know what it results to expect, we're just gonna go ahead and, uh, you know, just kind of plug that in there like that. Oh, well, that fits. And then, of course, the other end just kind of goes in here like this. Oh, yeah, that's a nice fit. Uh, when dealing with 240 volts, make sure you have the power off. There's like little weird arcs that can happen. Oh. And now the final step. Do you think it's going to work? Or will there be explosions? Well, of course it works. I made it. Now I get back to posting to the Facebooks all the harassing you good people with my YouTube videos when all you really want is some sim memes. I am not a meme lord and make the videos and I want you to watch them. Are you watching this right now or are you being traitor?